Man, okay, now I wanna know how this like all turns out. Kick ass, kick ass. Anyway, <laughs> I haven't even seen this, but this is making me emotional. Was that German or English? What? Huh? I am German and I was convinced that at one point she's speaking another language. She has like a Spanish accent. If I didn't have the English subtitles, I would have understood nothing. Servus and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Feli. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio on and off since 2016. And today we're going to look at German scenes in Hollywood movies and TV shows and check how German those really are. Because for some reason, even big film productions often hire actors that have never spoken a single word of German in their lives to portray German characters. And that's why in the end, a lot of the German dialogue in these movies end up to be complete gibberish. Now, this is actually the third time I'm doing one of these videos. If you haven't seen the other two videos, definitely make sure to check those out as well. We already looked at some of the German scenes in Inglorious Bastards, Die Hard, James Bond, Jojo Rabbit, and so many more. I'm gonna put the links in the info box for you guys as always. But you guys keep submitting more and more scenes that you want me to look at, and that's exactly what we'll do today. So I went through your comments and a lot of you suggested this scene from the TV show X-Files, which is a classic both in Germany and the US. It's called Akte X in German and this is season 6 episode 3 with the title Triangle where, and I wrote this down, Mulder ends up on a ship that disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle in 1939. So like he he ended up on this ship that is somehow stuck in time in 1939 on the exact day that World War II started and he gets swept up in a power struggle between the ship's crew and a group of Nazis who want to get their hands on a prototypical nuclear bomb. Oh, shit. Okay, I already hear some German. Achtung zurück. Like, attention, get back. That's another German. Mach schnell. <laughs> Mach schnell. It's like funny because for some reason, Nazis in American movies always use the word schnell. I mean, it makes sense, but Ben, like that was one of the only words that he knew in German before he met me was schnell because they always say that in these movies. So he said, hurry up, get up. Yeah, there's no subtitles. Exactly. We have a man on board. No subtitles, is that how they aired the episode? Like maybe it's not important that everyone understands everything. Okay, so he said, he's the other Nazi apparently. He said we have a man on board. And a Wissenschaftler. A scientist. Der weiß, wie man eine Bombe macht. Who knows how to make a bomb. Who would win the war. Ask him who the man is. There's a scientist on board who can make a bomb. Who is this man? I don't know. A buffer bright. Now get your guns ready. Suck in. Wir werden eine Passagier umbringen. Verschiedene Forscher Antwort. Okay, it's so not the easiest to understand, but I mean, he's doing a really good job. Um, he said, tell him that we're gonna kill a passenger for every wrong answer. Well, answer the question, or we will begin killing passengers. Yeah. Which one is the scientist? I don't know. She's okay, we're, we're shooting. That's an intense scene to start this video with. You guys told me to watch this one. No! No! He didn't even do anything. Or may I don't know. I didn't watch the episode. So I don't know. Maybe. Probably not, though. He's probably innocent. Frogging. How many lives are you willing to sacrifice? Okay, I think he said, Frag ihn, wie viele Personen erst sterben müssen. I think he like said that a little bit wrong. So ask him how many people have to die. None. Then you have the answer. 
I kind of feel like his German accent in English is kind of going in and out. Like some of the words he pronounces very German, like how I would say a German accent sounds. Like uh, then you have the answer or answer what he just said. But then some of the words, like the vowels, sounded very English, like very American. Like the way that I think he said like passengers or something like that. Um, like a German would probably be more likely to say like passenger, passenger or something like that. But if I got seeking to nunnen. What? Have I got seeking to nunnen? Huh? Maybe I'm like just in the wrong mode in my head, but was that German or English? For some reason, I didn't understand that part. She's not mal. Okay. Uh, shoot again. She's not mal, I think is what he said. Stop! This man has no answers. You're killing innocent people to learn that he knows nothing. Shut up. Shut up and move. For some reason, when she just came in and screamed, stop, I mean, first of all, that sounded very German, but for some reason, I associated Diane Kruger with that voice. She just sounded exactly like Diane Kruger to me. Listen to me, you little weasel. I'm an Australian passenger and a dummer. Rick to take off sea. Okay, uh, point the gun at the at the lady. She see. Shoot her. Die Frage. Nick Ben Fortet. Wenn er die Frage nicht beantwortet, if he doesn't question. answer the question. I'll answer the question. <laughs> now I kind of want to watch the episode. <laughs> they said again, answer the question. That man is the scientist. Smart. Smart. Or maybe they won't believe him. Man, okay, now I want to know how this like all turns out. I mean, I don't even know where in the episode the scene is from. I don't know if this is like right at the beginning, if any of these people are actually involved, if these people were innocent. I don't know, but as you could tell, uh, I could understand pretty much everything they said, except for that one sentence. I don't, sometimes it's just like, you're just not seeing the obvious. So maybe that was super obvious. If you understood that sentence, let me know in the comments below. Um, overall, these two were definitely not German native speakers. That was very clear. However, I think they did a really good job also just assuming that they don't usually speak German. I looked it up and apparently both of these actors are usually other characters on the X-Files so they're kind of like bringing in regular characters to then now portray these Nazis in this episode and they're both Canadian actors. William B. Davis is the cigarette smoking Nazi and Chris Owens I think is the other one. Um, I never really watched X-Files. I've seen like maybe one or two episodes here and there like not really. My dad was always a big fan of the German dubbed version so yeah don't quote me on anything but that's what the internet said that I think those are the two actors and I looked it up and it didn't say that they had any background in speaking German or anything like that but I think both of them did a really good job with like inflection like sometimes the people who don't actually speak the language when they then have to do these scenes they just mush it all together and they kind of like don't know where one word ends and the next word starts or where like the right point in the sentence is to make a pause in terms of emphasizing certain things and I felt like both of them actually did a really good job in terms of of like yeah inflection like they knew where the words ended and stuff like that so they probably got good coaching where they're just really talented but yeah at the end of the day you could clearly hear that they were not German native speakers and that's okay I mean in a case like this you wouldn't really expect them to hire German native speakers to play these characters if they are supposed to be recurring characters from the actual show next up someone suggested Breaking Bad where the company Madrigal, I don't know how that is supposed to be pronounced, Madrigal, um, is supposed to be a German one. Spoiler, they're not doing a very good job, unfortunately. Let's check it out. Nee, Mustard. Von der Forschungsabteilung, dies ist unser Zusseres Rezept für den amerikanischen Mittleren Westen. Okay. Wir haben den Zuckeranteil um fast 14% erhöht, benutzen not aber tatsächlich 2,2% weniger Honig. Das Ganze balancieren wir aus mit sehr fruchtzuckerhaltigem Maissirup. Wir sind ganz zufrieden mit dem Ergebnis. That's so funny that like they're adapting the sauces for the American market and they're saying, well, we made it like way sweeter and we added high fructose corn syrup, which in a lot of other countries is banned. Like in Germany, for example, that's also why Coca-Cola and other drinks or products that exist in both countries taste very differently. Maybe you know if you're if you live in the US that Mexican Coke is always like something special. It tastes different because again that's made with sugar and not high fructose corn syrup. Dies hier ist eine neue Konzeption und wir finden sie echt prima. Halb he's doing French a good job though. Dressing, but he's not French. German. Wir nennen es einfach French. 
French. Obwohl unsere Freunde in Marketing es vielleicht für angebracht halten werden, etwas Griffigeres zu erfinden. He's rolling his R. I looked it up and it said that this is supposed to be in Hanover, so they wouldn't really roll their R's there. It's more like a Southern German thing. If that, most Germans just do the guttural R, the H. But I mean, for a lot of non-native speakers, it's just easier to roll it. But I can definitely understand everything he's saying. Haben he Sie just has an accent. Have you idea to French? French? Is like to... <laughs> yeah? Cajun kick ass? That's <laughs> allerdings is kind of Cage and kick ass. See, again, I feel like we wouldn't really say it like that with a German accent. We would say kick ass, kick ass, kick ass. Anyway, <laughs> it's just really funny. Formulierung erdacht, um gastrische Notfälle zu mildern, die vom, die vom Original hereren Smoky Mesquite BBQ mit. Now that got a little weird there. I don't know if I could follow what he was Geschmack. saying. Like, I mean, I see the English subtitles, of course, but he said something like herhören or herrühren, maybe. That's what he meant, like it, it's stemming from. Yeah. Und? It's so sweet that he's not ketchup. responding at all. <laughs> And ketchup. Das letzte ist eigentlich nur ketchup. <laughs> what is his problem? I honestly would like to try French. I think I would like that. If that exists, maybe I'll just mix that my, myself at some point. That sounds like a good combination. Dude, the silence. Whew. Herr Schuler, Sie sind zurück. Drei diesmal. Sagen Sie Ihnen, dass ich gleich komme. Okay, I think he's a native speaker. Yeah, he's a native speaker. She is it. Okay, at least he can talk. He said something. Dude, that was awkward. Now, I see why the person who commented that said that they're not doing a very good job, because like, yeah, he's clearly not a German native speaker. Now, again, this is actually the case for, I think, all of the seats that I picked up for today's video, so please don't come for me. But I haven't seen the show either. I tried watching Breaking Bad, like, years ago. I just didn't really get into it. And some people say you have to watch the first season to really get into it. I just didn't really have the patience for that. So I don't know if these are recurring characters. I'm kind of assuming not. If that's true, that these are just characters that only show up in this episode, I think they could have made the effort to actually hire German native speakers. Now, apparently they did for the other guys. So let's see how this continues. I will say though, like in comparison to other scenes that I've seen before, the dude did do a pretty good job. Like kudos to him for getting that down. I tried to find out who he is. Like I couldn't really find an episode description to find out who this scientists or lab guys, um, like actors name is to see if he has any background in speaking German, but he definitely doesn't sound like a native. Ah, that's the company Madrigal Elektromotoren. Okay, so um, electro engines. Burger Matic, Burger Matic. These are not real chains, are they? At least I've never heard of those. What does this company have to do with all these foods anyway? Okay, Polizei, please. So he's definitely clearly in trouble. Or he's up to something. Or like his company is going down the drain and he is concerned about it. That's an interesting looking bathroom. Definitely German. It definitely looks more German than it does American. The red toilet has an interesting touch. If you've seen my video about bathroom differences, you notice the floating toilet and the water tank in the wall. I think that was the lady from... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you could hear it when she said beheilig. Herr Schuler. Herr Schuler, ich bin Kriminalkommissar Kunst. That's a German voice. But that makes sense, it's off camera. Okay. Herr Schuler, öffnen Bunch Sie die deep Tür. stuff here. Yeah. Sofort, Herr Schuler. Ooh, I don't know if I want to show this on my channel. Öffnen Sie. Well, 
I might have to cut this off here. So, spoiler, he ends up killing himself. Um, I do not want to show that on my channel, but I just looked it up and that guy was in fact um, a German native speaker. So the actor's name is Norbert Weisser. He is from around Frankfurt, but apparently has been living in the US since like the mid 1960s and was in a lot of English speaking movies, including Schindler's List. That is a good cast. Props to that. Maybe the other guy could have been cast a little bit better. By the way, if you want to stream Breaking Bad without any ad breaks on Netflix, but it's not available in your country, or you want to check out what this scene looked like in the German dubbed version, or you just want to watch more authentic German content, you can do all of that with the help of private internet access. Shout out to them for sponsoring this video and for offering the most amazing deal that I've ever had on my channel. We'll get to that in a second. Private internet access is a VPN that helps you protect your devices and your personal data from hackers, internet service providers, and others that are on the same Wi-Fi network. Being on the internet without a VPN is kind of like using a public restroom with a see-through door. It allows other people and entities to access things like your passwords, sensitive information, or even personal files like photos. But private internet access hides your IP address and safeguards your internet connection through an encrypted tunnel. That's why whenever I get to a hotel or airport or coffee shop where I have to use a public Wi-Fi network, the first thing I do is turn on my VPN. Plus, it allows you to access content from other parts of the world that is usually blocked in your country. Because streaming services like Netflix, Amazon Prime, or Disney Plus have different movies and shows in their libraries in different countries. Fortunately, PIA has service in over 84 countries, so if you live in Australia or New Zealand, for example, where Breaking Bad isn't available on Netflix, all you gotta do is open the app, select the US, and ta-da! There it is. Or for me, if I wanted to watch The American Office, for example, which is not available on Netflix USA, unfortunately, I just set my location to the UK. And the same goes for sports broadcasts that are often heavily restricted by region. If you live in Germany, for example, and let's say want to watch the next Super Bowl on American TV to hear what the experts say and watch the infamous American commercials, you can do that. And since there are even regional blackouts within the US, PIA actually has servers in every single one of the 50 US states, so you don't have to worry about that. You can even use a VPN to get better deals, like for certain subscriptions or even when buying flights. Now, as I mentioned before, private internet access is literally giving out the best deal that I've ever had on my channel, because with my link in the info box below, you'll get an 80 3% discount, 83%, which means it's only $2.03 a month, and you'll even get four extra months completely for free. And it gets even better because with just one subscription, you can now protect unlimited devices. So you can put it on your phone, your tablet, your laptop, your spouse's laptop, really all of your family devices. And if that's not enough, they even have a 30-day money-back guarantee. So do yourself a favor, get this deal through the link in the info box below. And thanks again to Private Internet Access for making this possible. Next up, a bunch of people suggested for me to look into the Netflix show Wednesday. That is a Adams Family spin-off that came out last fall, I think. Jenna Ortega portrays Wednesday Adams in that. I think everyone has heard about the show. I have not watched it again. I'm sorry. I think all of the shows that I have seen, like the shows and the movies I have seen myself, I used in the first part of this video series, because like those were the scenes that came to my mind first. This scene actually has been talked about quite a lot due to her German paragraph that she has in there. This is episode three. It's called Friend or Woe. And the plot is that the students have an outreach day, which means that they all go volunteer somewhere. And then Wednesday ends up in Pilgrim World, which is this like fake tourist attraction place that's supposed to be a recreation of the first Pilgrim settlement in 1625. And the volunteer are supposed to sell fudge at this place that's called Ye Old Fudgery. And if you don't know what fudge is, that's something that I feel like in Germany or other parts of Europe is not really that well known. I think in the UK you guys might have that, I'm not quite sure. But it's this like sugary confection candy that is very popular in the US. I think they have it in different flavors. It has like almost like a nougat consistency. Like it's not fully hard, but not fully soft. And it's, it's very sugary. <laughs> Genießen Sie Ihr authentisches Pilgrimfudge aus Kakaobohnen, bezogen von den unterdrückten und Wohnern des Amazonas. Puh. Alle einen nehmen dazu, dass er armselige Schüsschen für bereit der amerikanischen Geschichte auf Fresh gehalten. Was? Oh. What did she say? Fudge wurde erst 158 Jahre später erfunden. Okay, something... Hat jemand Interesse? Hat jemand Interesse? Okay, wow. 
Wow, that was not only fast, but compared to the other two scenes that we just saw, not as good, which is okay. I am not quite sure why she's even speaking German in this scene to begin with. Maybe it's just a group of German tourists and she's just like her character supposedly speaks German because the people also responded in German. They were like, was? But this is, this is placed in the US and according to what I read about the episode and I also clicked through the episode briefly, it doesn't really seem like there's any other German here. So I would assume it's just German tourists. Let's look at it again. Okay, genießen Sie Ihr authentisches Pilgrimfudge aus Kakaobohnen. Bezogen von Yeah, it's it's interesting. She has like a Spanish accent, like a Latina accent rather than an American accent, which makes sense because she has a Latina background. But I mean, she is also American. Uh, and so you would kind of assume that she might have an American accent, but I feel like she has no American accent whatsoever. It's like 100% a Latina accent. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, it kind of makes sense too, because like some of the sounds are more similar between Spanish and German. So like the vowels, she's actually doing a good job with the vowels, like the A sounds, for example. The R, she's just doing the rolled Spanish R, which again is often easier for people to do. If she was French, for example, she would have no problem doing the guttural R because French people also do that. But yeah, if you speak Spanish, then definitely the rolled R is you're gonna be your go-to sound to imitate that. It is really, like if I didn't have the English subtitles, I would have understood nothing. Maybe like a word here and there. It's really difficult to understand. Alle einen nehmen dazu. Hold on, what? Aufrecht zu erhalten, I think she said at the end. Um, and I think einen nehmen was supposed to be einnahmen according to the subtitles. It's tricky. <laughs> she just says the number in English. <laughs> 258. She just says that it would be 258. She just says it in English. That's really the best sentence. I wonder, like, did they make her just rush through it so much that they just not care? Because I feel like that could have definitely been improved. Like, it's probably not that hard to get that down a little bit better, do another take where she says the number in German. But probably just like for so many other productions, they just didn't really care as long as it sounds German to the viewers, it's probably fine. And that's actually my question for you guys. If you don't speak German, did this sound German to you? Like as a, as a non-speaker, did this have like a German sounding vibe or did this sound like Spanish to you? Because I felt like she had such a strong Spanish accent. Okay, so I just looked it up because I think we need that for context. So the full paragraph in German, supposedly, is Genießen Sie Ihr authentisches Pilgrimfudge aus Kakaobohnen bezogen von den unterdrückten Ureinwohnern des Amazonas. I don't think that when she said unterdrückten Ureinwohnern, that was understandable at all. But that is pretty tricky to say. Alle Einnahmen dienen dazu, die armselige Schönfärberei, that is also a word that I did not understand, not even with the subtitles, I knew that that's the word they were going for. I don't feel like that's a very common word to use. Again, alle Einnahmen dienen dazu, die armselige Schönfärberei der amerikanischen Geschichte aufrecht zu erhalten. Übrigens, Fudge wurde erst 258 Jahre später erfunden. Hat jemand Interesse? And then the English translation of that was, as you saw in the subtitles, enjoy your authentic pilgrim fudge made with the cacao beans procured by the oppressed indigenous people of the Amazon. All proceeds go to uphold this pathetic whitewashing of American history. So whitewashing was um, translated to Schönfärberei, which doesn't have the word white in it at all. It just kind of means like nice coloring, like make it look nicer than it actually is. Also fudge wasn't invented for another 258 years, any takers. There's actually a few other clips on the internet, like here's a YouTube shorts clip, for example, where um, people are commenting on this. And I, I totally agree with them. Someone said I am German and I was convinced that at one point she's speaking another language, but then German is not an easy language, LOL. True, 100%. If I didn't have the subtitles, which I think the subtitles are part of the episode, but it's 
yeah, it's not easy to understand. I didn't even know some of the words she said in German with the subtitles. This would be perfect for what German sounds like for non-German speakers. Sometimes you recognize the German words, but most of the time it's gibberish. Laugh my ass off. Again, is that, did that sound German to you guys or did it sound maybe something else? Um, hat jemand Interesse? It was actually really good. Yeah, that's true. That's what I said. The last sentence is good. I'm German in the beginning and end were pretty understandable. The rest sounded like Dutch to me, lol, but I think she did a really good job memorizing all of this. That is true. That's probably a lot to memorize. I don't know how much time she had to learn this. Almost seems like she did it just in a day. And that's funny that this person said that about Dutch because I say that all the time and I've said that in a few other videos where I reacted to American celebrities speaking German or some of these other scenes where I feel like this sounds more Dutch to me than it does German. And then other people disagree with me and say like in the comments, they're like, you don't obviously don't know what Dutch sounds like. Seems like I'm not alone. I didn't think that this one sounded like Dutch. Okay, this is my comment right here. I gotta give this a thumbs up. It says, it sounds like if German was Spanish. That is what I was thinking. American content creators are out here saying she's fluent in German, cap. Okay, I do also wanna recommend a video by Learn German with Herr Antrim because he actually went through the entire thing and took it apart and kinda explained how you should have said it instead, um, what was done wrong in this scene and um, yeah, kind of explains it as a German teacher. Super interesting, I'm gonna put the link for that up here for you and down in the info box if you wanna look at that. Overall, I mean, props to her for doing that. Again, I think that the people who made the show should have maybe cared a little bit more about accuracy because at the end like these German tourists are reacting as if they understand it all which there's like no way that they would but at this point I think we're kind of used to that in American productions that it's all about just sounding as if it was German and it doesn't really matter if it actually makes sense. Next up, we have one that was requested a lot. It's Band of Brothers, which is a mini series from the early 2000s about World War II. I mean, I'm actually surprised that I have a lot of scenes today that aren't World War II related because in a lot of cases, these German scenes make their way into Hollywood movies and TV shows because they're Nazis, right? I mean, we had the X-Files where it was Nazis, um, but then I think this is the only other one for this video today. And I actually got two different kinds of comments on this. Some people just said, if you do another video on the subject, would love to have you analyze Band of Brothers, specifically the scene where the German general addresses his troops at the end of the war. So that's what we're gonna do first. Captain Sobel. I know him, he's in... Major winners. Captain Sobel. It's it called Homeland. I know him. the rank, not the man. Cam? Okay. Männer! Here we go. Es war ein langer Krieg. Es war ein harter Krieg. Yeah, he's German. You got? That's my analysis. <laughs> it's been a long war, it's been a tough war. Ihr habt tapfer und stolz für euer Vaterland gekämpft. You fought bravely. Proudly for your country. So he's just translating for him. I don't know what this character is. special group. Die ineinander Zusammenhalt gefunden hat. Found in one another a bond. It's a pathetische Rede, It exists only in combat. Unter Kameraden. Among brothers. Die Fuchshöhlen geteilt haben. And this is this is a scene in the very last episode of season one, or of the show in general. I'm not sure. Held each other in dire moments. Die den Tod zusammen gesehen haben und gemeinsam gelitten haben. We've seen death and suffered together. So yeah, this is full on German, very accurate. Mit euch gedient zu haben. I'm proud to have served with each and every one of you. Sie alle verdienen ein langes und glückliches Leben in Frieden. You deserve long and happy lives in peace. I haven't even seen this, but this is making me emotional. I mean, the music too. Whew. Okay, so my assessment is pretty clear. This is full on authentic. Good job, whoever produced the show. He is a German native speaker and I just looked it up. His name is Wolf Kala uh, from Kiel. And I couldn't really find that much information about him, but it seems like he was in a lot of English speaking movies. So I would assume that he also maybe lives in the US, um, but he was in things like Indiana Jones, Sherlock Holmes, Wonder Woman, like the list is endless. Now, some of the other comments that I got about this said, in one of the last episodes of Band of Brothers, there's a scene where a German 
Armed General gives a speech to soldiers after surrender to U.S. forces. What we just saw. An American soldier that understands German translates the speech for the Americans. The problem here is in the German dubbed version. Because everybody speaks German, it makes no sense to let the GI translate it. What they did in the German version is that the GI makes fun of the German general by adding foul speech to the general's words. Odd, but it works somehow. All right, so that's what we're gonna look at now. Männer, es war ein langer Krieg. I wonder if he dubbed himself, but honestly, it sounds very different, I feel like. Es war ein harter Krieg. I don't think that's the same arrogant. guy. Sollte man ihm wirklich so ein Podium verschaffen? Also ich weiß nicht. Ihr habt tapfer und stolz für euer Vater. In case you guys have never seen a full on German dubbed version of something. This is this is what most Germans watch when they watch American movies and TV shows. The German dubbing industry is actually really good when you compare it to other dubbing industries internationally. It has a pretty good reputation and I actually know a lot about the scene because I used to work in radio and a lot of people work in radio and are voice actors. I think that is a fascinating field. Uh, but of course, to people who are used to watching everything in their native language in the original version that can be a little odd to like see that and like see how it's not 100% synced up of course because the lips are different than the words gekämpft ihre ansprachen heroischer art können sie einfach nicht weglassen ihr seid eine ganz besondere yeah wow that Truppe. is ein part of mein gott die miteinander einen zusammenhalt gefunden hat oh man oh man oh man Oh man, oh man, oh man. Wie er sich nur im Kampf entwickeln kann. Ja, 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 tolle Kämpfer. Und yeah, great fighters. Dude, this completely changes the dynamic of the scene. I haven't watched it, so I don't know if this fits in with the character. Maybe it does, maybe they aren't on good terms and it makes sense that he would kind of like talk down on him while he gives the speech, but it's kind of like a, what's the right word for this? Like demeaning, condescending way of commenting on his speech. Like he just keeps saying like, yeah, yeah, keep talking. Oh yeah, you're such a great hero. Like cynical. Die Schützenlöcher geteilt haben, die sich in schrecklichen Momenten gegenseitig gestützt haben. Die okay, den Tod here they just zusammen gesehen haben. That's good. Like in, when you can't see him, he doesn't have to say something. So I think that's good that they made him just not say something here. Und gemeinsam gelitten haben. Ich bin stolz. I don't know if he's saying something mit again. Euch gedient zu haben. So wie der aussieht, hat er doch niemals im Dreck gelegen. The way that he looks, he's never laid in the dirt. Sie alle verdienen ein langes und glückliches Leben in Frieden. Alles, was er gesagt hat, haben wir auch erlebt, Major Sir. Everything that he said we also experienced or also lived through. Okay, well, um, definitely understand why people wanted me to check that out because that is a weird way to adapted for the German dub version. I understand that they had to do something. Um, again, I don't know how much this like really changes the dynamic. If you've seen the show, maybe it fits right in with the characters, but at least from my point of view, where I've just seen that scene, I feel like in the original, it's just very emotional and he's also emotional when translating it. And then here he's like completely just bashing him. Now, last but not least, I picked a scene from The Crown, which was also suggested. And again, I haven't watched The Crown. I don't know if you have, but I think everyone kind of knows of it. It's this Netflix show that has been on since 2016, and it is based on the British royal family. It's not like a documentary, but it does include, I think, a lot of true events, or I think it's it's mostly supposed to show true events. I'm not quite sure how accurate it is, but in this episode, apparently there's a little bit of German in it, which makes sense because if you watched my video about King Charles visiting Germany recently, I'm gonna link the video down below for you. Um, I talked a little bit about the German heritage of the British royal family, and therefore Prince Philip was actually fluent in German. King Charles can speak some German. I don't know how much he actually speaks, but he's decent at pronunciation. And then here we have have Queen Mary, the grandmother of Queen Elizabeth II, who just died last year. And she was actually born as Maria von Teck to a German father, even though she was, I think, born and raised in the UK. She definitely spoke some German and grew up with it. So this is the scene. I have no clue otherwise what's happening in this, but let's see. 
Call him by his name, if you have one. His Royal Highness Prince Ernst August of Hanover, Your Majesty. He's here. What? He apologizes for the lack of warning, but said it was important. Of Hanover, he said, which there was also, I think it was King Charles I, who was also von Hannover, like of Hanover. He was king in like the 1700s because there was no other heir at the time. And he was German, but he was related and uh, took over the throne at that time. And the British royal family actually even had a German last name until pretty late, like until the 20th century, which was from Saxe, Coburg and Gotha. And they didn't change it to Windsor until like World War I sometime. And it's funny because this episode actually has the title Windsor. So I don't know if this is what this episode is about. Anyway, same last name, same family. All right. So I guess they must be somehow related. Let's show him in. Well, she's not very happy to see him, I guess. Herr Würdiger Tante, ich wollte nicht stören. Ich, ich komme direkt aus Wormwitz. Was hast du da gemacht? Please tell me was shooting one day after the funeral. Oh, mein lieber Ernst. In the evening, we gathered for dinner. The food is normally quite good at Broadlands. Outstanding. Especially the dark from memory with oranges. Rum soaked raisins. Oh, a Prussian recipe. Die Spätzle war hervorragend. Hochgarend, mm. mit, mit Käse und Brösel. Mm, köstlich. Go on, after dinner. Okay, I think that was it. Our host started to brag about how the royal house would soon be in his name. Nonsense. The royal warrant of 1917 established the house of Windsor. Okay, here we go, My yep. 1917 is when himself. they changed the it to Windsor. Windsor would only be carried by the male descendants. It did not take into account the female descendants. They would take the name from their husbands, which in this case would mean Mountbatten. Aha! <sighs> yeah, we literally just talked about that in the other video as well. Mountbatten was also actually translated directly from a German last name, which was Battenberg, and that is the last name of Prince Philip, who is heavily of German descent. That's why he was also very fluent in speaking German. Prince Philip was our last queen's husband, who also only died like three years or two years ago or something like that. And that's funny that they brought that up because yeah, that was that's interesting. They basically just anglicized the last name from Battenberg, which literally means Button Mountain to Mount Batten. He had us raising glasses to it. Glasses containing what? But I mean, they somehow must have solved this issue, Champagne. right? Because. Queen Elizabeth did end up being a Windsor. But yeah, okay, to their German skills. It's just a cute little German scene that not anything heavy. They just talked about food, basically. Neither of them are German native speakers. They did a decent job, I think. Could have been better. I don't think she needs to sound like a German native speaker because from what I understand, Queen Mary, as I said, wasn't raised in Germany, but it seems like he is like literally of Hanover. So I feel like they sh he should be a German native speaker, but hey, at least they brought actual German language into this episode, which is cool. I mean, they could have just kept it all in English. So props for that. So those were all of the scenes that I had on my list for today. Let me know in the comments below which scenes I should check out next or we should check out next together in a video. I already have on my list Indiana Jones, uh, the Marvel show, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And then lots of people always suggest Hogan's Heroes, which I have on my list, but I almost feel like that has to be its own video because there's just so much there. But yeah, let me know what other TV shows or movies I should check out in the next video and ideally let me know which scene it is, give me a time code or at least like the episode title or something. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to support me and my channel by hitting the subscribe button. If you'd like to get notified about new uploads on here, just activate the notification bell. You can also send me a super thanks underneath the video or become a Patreon supporter on patreon.com slash Germany. And you can also check out my online shop at Feli from germany.com for authentic Bavarian beer mugs. You can even have them personalized. We also have really cool t-shirts and many, many other cool products. With that, thank you so much for watching and I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss.